Hi, everyone. Woo! Welcome, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome to Wine, Wine, and Ones. I'm Lo. And I'm Dee. And welcome to A Bad Time. So for bad those of you time. just finding us and, and jumping into the fun, uh, Lo and I are going through episode by episode to watch, critique, and generally whine about Once Upon a Time. Uh, one thing you need to know about us is we hate this show. And it we is our absolute love favorite this show. <laughs> We love this show. And it's important to note that we are not watching for the first time. This is no. our, I think it's only our second full watch through, but we have watched many of these episodes many, many times. So oh this God, will yes. not be a spoiler free podcast. This no. is Spoiler City. It is. You are welcome to walk Geelong every week. Or, of course, you can always just listen if you don't mind being spoiled. Exactly. And we do have kind of a list of things we're, we're going through to try to get to the bottom of. Uh, just so for those of you who have not been listening so far, we're looking at a family tree, the fuck fern. It's exactly what you think it is. Emma's <laughs> lie count, the magic bean count, and the final curse list. So these are, that and more is uh, what we'll be discussing into, yeah. But before we do that... Because who wants to do that? How are you? Huh. How's it going? Doing well. Um, can't complain. I've got two, four day weeks back to back. So all's well in my world, really. Yeah, that's I mean, amazing. I'm really looking forward to it. So that part's really nice. How are you? I'm good. I am busy. I started my creative writing class last week, and the good news is I have not changed since college. I still procrastinate until the day before. <laughs> Wonderful. Right? It, it, you know, it's nice to know that it wasn't just the college environment. That's just me. Well, see, and here's the thing. I was going to ask, now, did you build yourself a blanket fort to do your writing in? But okay. I know that came afterwards. <laughs> it did, but it did feel correct. Like, it didn't feel wrong. Oh, blanket I, I forts still, are for writing in. Exactly. I think that everyone should just build a blanket fort. You'll feel better. Hot pro tip for college students out there. Build a blanket fort in your living room right before finals. Call it the finals fort. And the rules of the finals fort are if you're in the fort, you're <laughs> studying or crying. Mostly crying, probably. Mostly but, you crying. Know, I guess I, I'll, I'll know that probably depends on whether or not you're at a uh, school on a quarter system or a semester mm. system. That's fair. That is anyway. Fair. Oh, what are you drinking this evening? What's uh, I have my uh, beautiful, wonderful, natural lime white claw. You know, a classic. Fancy. I I have broken away from the seltzers the last few weeks. Wow, I'm continuing that train. I'm drinking a, it's a sour I haven't tried before. It's called a uh, Tropical Sour Nova. Ooh. So we'll see how another that goes. Fancy, I'm, I'm, another fancy sounding drink out of you. Right. I, that's what I'm here for. The very fancy sounding basic drinks. Fair. I think that's totally fair. That's all I've got. Oh, God. All right. Have we stalled enough? I suppose. I suppose. I mean, look, the good news is. It's Jesus David week. Oh, in Jesus I trust. <laughs> I oh, I don't. I don't. Oh, trust I him. don't. Love him. <laughs> love him. Oh. I love it. I love a Jesus moment. But he, yeah, the, oh, that the aesthetic is strong. It's true. But if we're talking about David Jesus, that could only mean one thing. This is episode six, The Shepherd. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Um. So. Before we dive in, any just initial thoughts you had going in? Because my one thing was literally nothing happened last week. So nothing. And so I was, as we were rewatching, I mean, I know this is one of our favorites and we revisited it simply for the aesthetic of David as a shepherd. But I was just like, is it another one where nothing happens? And then I was writing the summary and writing out the scenes, and I was like, oh, no. Lots happens, happens in this one. Everything this is two episodes. Happens. 
This is think, two episodes just slammed into one. What I think what's interesting is if you were to ask me what happens in this episode, I would say, oh, David is a shepherd and looks like Jesus. That is exactly five minutes of the episode. I could not truly walk you through the rest. And yet that's all I remember. Like, I, I've watched it many times, and still the key takeaway is David is Jesus. I mean, may the Lord be with you. And also with you. And with your spirit. And with your spirit. Yeah. Everyone take a drink. I'm going to take two, because this is, this is reading time. This is reading time for you. And I will say, as... Before we jump in, this is an enjoyable episode. I had a great time watching it. I really did enjoy it. So for as much as we're going to sit here and nitpick, this was this was one episode that I was like, oh, right. This is why we liked this show so much. It's definitely one of those episodes where you just kind of are along for the journey and you just let it happen. Yeah, well, I think it's well paced. You know, you don't spend too much time in either present it's day whiplash or, either right like you spend good long chunks of time in the enchanted forest and then you go to storybrook and mm-hmm. you spend some time there and that it's it's a well-paced episode and exactly as we're gonna get into it actually has some bearing on the plot and it has some connections which is we love that super new and exciting we love when they do a thing so true. Well, All right, bring us in. Let's do this. All right, so our thrilling episode starts with Catherine. She has brought David home from the hospital, and they walk into the house. She mentions there used to be a windmill in the yard that he absolutely hated, and of course, David remembers none of this because amnesia. Right. And, and great news, it's a welcome home surprise party situation, which really feels like a lot this spring on Amnesiac. Right, so much just coming home from the hospital right and the bonkers thing to me is that dr whale chimes in is like this will this will be good it's a good idea sir why did we give this man a phd (laughs) he should not be an md no absolutely not Uh, i also love this because we walk into the nolan house and there are just dozens of random ass citizens we will never see again oh of course not these npcs so true. So them. true. And the wallpaper in the Nolan's house is oh, aggressive. Oh, God. The entire decor. I have questions. So <laughs> many. You will get no answers. Correct. You will get none. Correct. But, so, so we're at this surprise welcome home party, and David does not remember anyone except for the people he's met since waking up. Henry, in, a stou- in an astounding leap of logic, says it's because his cursed memories haven't settled in yet. And he's telling Emma they have to do something to make him remember that he's Prince Charming. And he also asks David if he's ever used a sword. Solid. Like one does. You know, normal party conversation. That's my (laughs) icebreaker. You know what? That would be an excellent icebreaker. Because if you get a yes, there's a story there. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like I would get more yeses than I anticipate. Very true. Which is terrifying. Right? So... All of this is going on, you know, Henry is interrogating David and Catherine walks into the kitchen and Regina's there and she confides she's upset because she doesn't feel like she really has her husband back. You know, he's physically here, but emotionally detached. Regina says that she had a similar situation, only her love died. Catherine is therefore lucky because David is still here and they have a chance to figure it out. So Catherine decides, you know what, great, let's do this. I'll go back out and party. She walks out and David's gone. No one knows where he went. He Nobody left thought his to own st- party. <laughs> Nobody thought to stop him. Ask where he might be going. They you know, figured it was fine. Let the amnesiac wander. Why not? For him. He did it before. <laughs> Just let him out through the woods door. <laughs> yeah. We will never not be angry about that, by the way. Does the Nolan house have a woods door? Apparently. Well, no, it actually has a... Blanchard house door because oh, David has gone to Mary Margaret's house. Of course. Naturally. Of and, course. you know, he shows up. And he leaps over the fence like a sane person. Instead of using the gate, he. There's a perfectly good gate, sir! Right next to him. It's not like it was out of the way. No, no. He just chose to jump over this fence. And 
you know, he shows up and crossing says, a boundary. You yes, know, it's very symbolic, and I uh, hate it. I have a lot of thoughts about this. We started last week, and oh boy, are they oh, not they gone? Continues. They continues. So he hops over the fence and promptly says, "Oh, did you lose your invite, or were you not invited?" And she kind of laughs it off, and then he he presses forward and says, "Well, I heard you resigned from the hospital. Why?" And he kind hey, of alludes David. that he's the reason. Hey, David. Leave it alone. Leave her no. alone. He cannot. That's not the charming way. Okay, fine. I'm going to be quiet and now, but. There's more, there's more to unpack here, but Mary Margaret really tries to, to remind him that he's married mm-hmm. and that they can't be doing this. And she's trying to set these boundaries in. And mm-hmm. she finally kind of says her first, like, hey, back off. And, and David insists, no, I'm choosing you. You're who I love. Which is all very troubling to Mary Margaret. We then flash over to the Enchanted Forest where we see it looks like our dear Prince Charming, but we find out later this is Prince James. And he's finding a fighting a giant man, very Games of Thrones. Games of Thrones. Woo. Games of Thrones. <laughs> so many games. Uh, very Game of Thrones esque. And yeah. James appears to win and slays his opponent. And it's all very exciting. And King George, his dad, makes a deal with King Midas. And in exchange for killing a dragon, the kingdom will be rewarded with, with, with all these riches and gold because, you know, Midas. Of course. So after Midas leaves, James is being, you know, a standard jerk and gloating and going, ha, I did it. And standing over the corpse like one does. And when he sure. turns his back, oh no, he is speared by the man who's not actually dead, which is very funny because moments before he... In battle, he was like, oh, always check if your opponent's dead. And he did not. So now and James not. is deceased. In a surprisingly very... gory death. Shockingly, for a family show. I mean, this show is not generally so gratuitously violent, but there are, like, several scenes mm-hmm. this episode that are like, oh, yeah. okay. We're going there. This is one of them. We're going to the drama place. Oh, <laughs> we're going to the gory places where we're the going. Gory place. <laughs> so George is maybe kind of sad about his son, but he is stoic as all hell. So we don't really know right. what he's ever feeling. But they may move fast and slay the dragon or else Midas will find somebody else. He doesn't have time to sit around and wait for a new prince to show up. Oh, well, of course not. So naturally, our only option is to call upon the Dark One. Uh, of course. Naturally. Ah, uh, yes. Naturally. The Dark One. <laughs> Never a good sign if you're at a point in your life where the Dark One has to be summoned. Things are not going well for you. Like, there's no... He clearly has a reputation. And no one ever steps in and is like, Hey. Maybe we don't. Maybe we don't. Of course not. Nope. Okay. No, nope. So right. they call... Rumble Stiltian, it, as it turns out, since he has a weird thing with babies... Brought James to the king as a baby because the queen couldn't conceive, couldn't have children. We don't know what's going on there, but for whatever reason, they needed a baby. Rumple made it happen. Right. George wants another deal to bring back James, and Rumple still can agrees, but he wants Fairy Godmother's wand, which I love a good callback to episode four. Of course. I love that. Always love exciting it. when plots actually weave together. Right. So cool to like go back and realize, oh, that's how. He knew where to find Cinderella's fairy godmother to get exactly. her wand. There was a plan at one point, is what this tells me. Once upon a time, heh heh, they had a <laughs> plan. So nice. So, you know, George agrees, but then mm-hmm. he finds out the dead can't be resurrected. And first off, that's just not true on this show. If you die, you have like an 80% chance of being revived at some point. Unless, unless you are someone. Robin. Unless you are someone that Regina loves. Then you're dead forever. Then you have a 0% chance of ever being revived. Thank you. Correct. George is very angry because Rumpel says, oh, well, I can't bring your son back. And he's like, dude, what the fuck, bro? You just said we could strike a new deal. And Rumpel reveals, oh, that James was, in fact, a twin. And that the twin dun. brother, the other boy, is still out there. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no. Meanwhile, in Storybrooke, Mary, Margaret, and Emma talk about David and Mary Margaret's obsessing over what David said about choosing her over Catherine. 
And Emma says that if she feels like she's doing something wrong, then she probably is. Correct. Suddenly she's the rational one. Don't like that. Never will be again. So don't worry. It's a (laughs) short-lived stint. But she implores Mary Margaret to leave him alone and let him figure out his own life and not get involved. Solid. Solid advice. Hey, every once in a while. She says a thing. Every now and again. Mm Mm-hmm. At the Nolan house, Catherine and David are going through old photos. She's trying to spark his memory, get something to stick. And Mm -hmm. she tries to, you know, put the moves on him. She was like, oh, do you want to go to sleep? And he goes like, sleep or winky face sleep? And she's like, I don't know. You you tell me. Uh, And he says, nah, it's not right. Never mind. (laughs) Which I love that he asks if his answer is no. Right. He's like. (laughs) Wait, do you mean, do you want to go to bed or do you want to go to bed? Mm-hmm. Both answers are no, but like, I want to know. <laughs> Either way, I don't want to. I was just curious. Yeah. Right. I just wanted to find out where you thought this was headed. Right. More on um, this disaster of a man later, because we have more important things in the Enchanted Forest, because enter Jesus, David, our Lord and Savior. So excited. We love it. We love to see it. There's David as a shepherd, and he has this long, I mean, it's not even that long, but for David, it's long, luscious hair. He has this nice little burlap sack outfit going on. He's herding goats and sheep. Truly, he has gone after the one after the 99 are still at home. (laughs) He's doing the Lord's work. It was the fact that you said that while we were watching as he was chasing the one. It was great. It was beautiful. I will never be that funny again in my life. Thank you. It was impressive. It was very impressive. Thank you. You're welcome. So he's, you know, being a shepherd and his mother returns from the market. And we, oh, I don't think she ever gets a name. So we, we're going to call her Mama David. Yeah, sure. Why not? Mm-hmm. Mama David is trying to set him up with a girl for the dowry because the farm is going under. They have no money. David right. insists, no, Mom, I'm going to marry for love. That's the one thing I can't afford. Very poetic. Suddenly, the Dark One shows up and reveals that Mama David gave up his twin brother in exchange for the farm many years ago. She never told anyone she was bound by this contract to say nothing. So David's like, Mama David, what the heck, man? That's what not the hell? Cool. <laughs> Mama David, no. Mama David, what the hell? <laughs> yep. Ew, Mama David. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. David learns the truth about having a, t- a twin brother. And Rumpel says, hey, David, if you go pretend to be this twin brother, James, and slay this dragon, his mom will be set for life. Mama David will have all the money from King Midas. She'll be golden. <laughs> Laugh, I'm hysterical, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the pity laugh. I needed that. You're welcome. Uh, it's important to note, this is the like only instance of uh, G- Jesus David we will get, but this is the entire episode to me. Not this yet. is the show now. Yeah, no. This is I the will show. never forget him. I will, I, he lives in my heart. I love and him. And in my brain, rent free. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So from there, we return back to Storybrooke. Mary Margaret is at Granny's Diner, where she runs into Dr. Whale, and he asks if she gave up this volunteer position at the hospital because of him. And, you know, the so one vain. date is barely ever addressed. So vain. So vain. He probably thinks this episode's about him. He probably does. I think he, Whale just thinks he is the main character. You know, he does have main character energy, energy but is Except not main it's character. Except not. <laughs> it's, no, it's not he, his he, show he at all. Who thinks, like, the vibes are not immaculate, but he thinks they are. Yeah, that's He thinks correct. he has the right music on. He does not. No, he's wrong. He's so wrong. So Mary Margaret just there reading a um, newspaper about the town. The headline is "Welcome Home, John Doe." So Which... you know nothing is happening in this goddamn town. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, nothing happens here. Uh, but Regina shows up and sits down at the table and says, "Hey, you and David don't belong together, and he's fragile and left his wife, and that she is this close to ruining lives." And Mary Margaret's just sitting there taking this. At this point, this woman has done nothing wrong. She has tried so hard to avoid David at every instance. Right. By all accounts, she's been doing everything right to try and stop whatever this man is doing. Mm -hmm. And 
Regina's over here continuing to be her absolute worst en enemy because her own worst yeah. enemy because she goes and antagonizes Snow when Snow is very clearly like trying to keep her distance and not do anything. And then Regina's like, hey, don't do anything. And now Snow's like, well, I gotta. Right? Regina should stop antagonizing people. It never works for her. Stop talking. She just need, she needs to learn how to press pause on her mm -hmm. words. Truly. So we now go back to the Enchanted Forest. And as it turns out, David's not really expected to slay the dragon. He's just, you know, the handsome face. He's never used a sword, so he would not be right. able to answer my icebreaker question. Correct. At least not at this point. Not at this point in his career. No. Uh, but all the knights are going to go into the cave with him and do the work, and he just needs to bring the head back and say, look, I did the thing. Right. Which seems like a pretty good gig, all in all. Truly. So they go to this cave, and you can see the, the smoke and the fire, and you know there's a dragon. And suddenly the hero instinct kicks in, because his friends have gone ahead to kill the dragon. They're getting demolished. They are just completely losing it. Another grisly scene wherein we see two men set on fire. They are a flame. A flame dead and dying. Yes. Like, and this is grim for this show. It truly is. And, you know, David has never used a sword charming. I don't think he has a last name. So his last name is charming now. Sure. Um, he decides, oh, no, I need to save everyone, even though I don't know how to fight. And because we need him to win, he manages to slay the dragon with a sword for good measure because he does what he wants. He's, he's a natural-born swordsman. Wow. We love to why, see it. That's why he helicopters his dick around. <laughs> Listen. It's a natural talent. It's the charming way. <laughs> I hate that this is in our vernacular now. Don't like it. Nope. Back at Storybrook, David shows up at Mary Margaret's classroom, which is a huge fucking no, by the way. Oh, that's <laughs> my God. Who let him in? Don't. Does he have a visitor's bed? Why are you talking in front of the children? How dare you interrupt her prep? Like, so many things. So many the reasons. Audacity. This is unacceptable, sir. Okay. The audacity that this man has. I need you to know that my notes for this scene, and we will come back to them, but it's, mm -hmm. I hate David. Hate him. Hate him. I yeah. stand by all of that. I know I support everything you said. Absolutely. This, so, is, you know, this he, is wild. It is. And he interrupts, he derails her entire day by saying, hey, Catherine deserves someone who feels about her what David feels for Mary Margaret. It's very beautiful proclamation says, if you feel the same way, meet me at the toll bridge tonight at 8. Be there. This is going to be great. Truly, there is no way that this plan can go wrong whatsoever. No, of course not. Nope. Oh, and at the sheriff's station, Graham brings Emma donuts and asks her to cover his shift. Because he needs to cover. Now, you're going to want to write this down because he asks, he tells her, Hey, I need to work at the pet shelter tonight. Can you take my night shift? And she says, fine, and eats her donut because she's very easily bribed. Uh, yeah. Mary Margaret shows up and asks, hey, what should I do about David? Here's what he came and said. He interrupted my entire day. And Emma, who is before so level-headed, full of wisdom, has lost all of that. Her <laughs> reason and common sense have flown out the window. And she <laughs> says, Mary Margaret, you have to meet him. He made a choice. Now you have to. And I would like to add, the choice was just, he left his wife, and that feels very much like a we-were-on-a-break sort of situation where no one really knows what it could mean. Right. I mean, it's just happened. Like, really? if it's happened, it's happened in the last 24 hours, and that's being generous. Uh -huh. It's likely happened in the last six. Right? Like, this right. is a, a very immediate decision that he's making. Correct. So back at the Enchanted Forest, uh, there's a meeting with George, Midas, and David. Midas is very impressed by the work that David has done. Well, he thinks it's James. He's like he's very pleased with the dragon head that he now has sitting on his desk made of solid gold. Of course. And he brings out his daughter, Abigail, slash Catherine in Storybrooke, 
and he wants to arrange a marriage immediately. Arrange the yeah. marriage. He's, he pulls up Prince Derek from Swan Princess. Arrange <laughs> the marriage. Consult no one. Have you ever seen a swan? Where is Bromley? <laughs> so this marriage is being proposed and David tries to say no, but George immediately pulls him aside and threatens him and says, you know, you'll be the ruin of everything and everyone in the kingdom if you don't agree to this. Oh, and also I'll kill Mama David. Okay. Super wow. chill. Super chill, casual. dude. Yeah, chill, so, dude. So David mulls it over and says, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> I suppose. I like my mom being not dead, thanks. Yep. That was the whole point I, of doing this thing, you know. Yeah. Shockingly. So back in Storybrooke, David's wandering around at 7.45 p.m. trying to find the toll bridge or the troll bridge, whatever you want to call it. He did not plan ahead. I feel like if you tell someone... Were. Yeah, I feel like if you tell someone to meet you there, you should probably figure out where, where that place is pretty... Really? early and lo and behold he runs into regina and she offers to help which is should always be a red flag if she's offering to help it's probably not going to be helpful so true at least in these early seasons so true and you know she asks hey why are you working looking for the bridge and he says i'm meeting someone and so she realizes that david has made a choice and has chosen mary margaret and gives him these directions that are complete bogus garbage Complete nonsense. Wonderful. Uh, of course, she has a plan here. David ends up at Mr. Gold's pawn shop, where he promptly sees a windmill and realizes that it's the windmill Catherine had told him about, the one they used to have in their front yard that he absolutely hated. Suddenly, he remembers everything from their cursed life, the memories that Henry was referencing earlier, and they all come flooding back to him. Meanwhile, Mary Margaret is all dressed up all cute, waiting at the toll bridge, like he told her to. So we know this is going to go great. It's going to be great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Can't wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the Enchanted Forest, David returns to his mom, who's very happy that, you know, he's alive. George mm -hmm. has already taken care of their house and made all these improvements to the farm. She is doing fantastic. But then David reveals that he's being, he has been, that he's now engaged to Midas' daughter. Against his will, he has no choice. Even though he doesn't love her, he has to marry Abigail. And also, since, you know, he's pretending to be Prince James, he can never see his mom again. And so he's not here for permission or to see how she... He, he's here to say goodbye. He's not here to hang out. This is a see you never, Mama David situation. Of course. Mm-hmm. So Mama David gives him a ring that was given to him by his father. And she says true love follows wherever it goes. And they hug goodbye, seemingly to never see each other again. Very sad. Truly. In Storybrooke, uh, we see that Mary Margaret's actually wearing this very ring and the one that David was just given by his mother. Uh, David finally shows up at the toll bridge like he said he would and promptly reveals that he remembers everything. Mary Margaret mm -hmm. is a little caught off guard and asks if he loves his wife and he says... He doesn't know, but he did have feelings once, and he has to honor the marriage vows because it's the right thing to do. Oh, now we do. And okay. He knows he was still married before, right? Those vows still existed. Oh, no, but you see, then he he didn't think they did. He didn't think they counted because he didn't have memories. So, you know, everybody knows amnesia gives you a free pass. Oh, shit, you're right. I have heard that, actually. <laughs> You know, he goes on about how he has to do the right thing. And Mary Margaret says, absolutely not. The right thing was to not lead her on. The right thing was to give her space. The right thing was to not pull her into this. And she walks off. She pulls her sweater very tight around her and sulks off. Jennifer Goodwin does really, like, really good work in this scene. She I does. She does. I she is... love it. I love you it. pointed it out. You pointed it out. But you, you made an excellent point about her she does the smiling while you're sad thing and i don't know if that's a jennifer goodwin thing but it sh if it's either way it really works for snow and that character for, it, yeah it, if you, particularly for mary margaret very correct exactly i love it we move over to emma who's working the night shift like she said she would she's patrolling and she sees a shadowy figure climbing out of the mayor's window 
So she runs and tackles the figure, and it's Graham. Oh! oh. Shocking no one, because we all knew this. You see, this is some fun irony for the viewers. And, and yeah, she probably a... figures out that Graham and Regina are having an affair, and he snuck out the window because they didn't want Henry to see. So yes, they were fucking with Henry just down the hall. You know, adds an element of surprise. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) So she says, you know, keep your donuts. I'm never working evenings again. She leaves, looking like she's in tears, which is odd to me. Because there was never an understanding with her and Graham. I don't know if she thinks that they were a thing. They were not. They've barely spoken. If, if They've had like three mm-hmm. scenes together. <laughs> if we're really being honest about it, there's very little that they have actually shared on screen. You know, I mean, spoiler alert, he dies in a freaking episode. Like, there, there is nothing happened. No. No, babes. You're no. fine. You're good. So David goes home to the Nolan house and he tells Catherine that They have work to do on their relationship, but he wants to see where it goes. And she invites him in, and we assume they're going to make things work. And go to bed, winky face. Winky face. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, just before we move on, I just... There was this one line from the scene with Graham that I really would like to revisit. And it was his very sad, pathetic little... I really do work at an animal shelter. Like, that's the problem! (laughs) It will be later, so just stick a pin in that. Oh, oh, Because I do have problems with everything that man has said. Oh, Graham. So many. Uh, Anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Back to the Enchanted Forest. Yes. So Abigail and David, and David, you know, pretending to be James, but for all intents and purposes, David. Right. Are engaged in getting ready to travel. She's wearing her truly heinous blue feathery would be Elsa dress. Mm-hmm. George is being his usual charming self and tells them to smile as they're on the route to true love. They ride away in a carriage where Snow White is waiting in the trees because naturally this is right where we pick up that relationship where she's going to steal the jewels. And, yeah. and then we, we end back in Storybrooke at Granny's Diner. Mary Margaret is sitting all alone, kind of sad, forlorn, thinking about everything that's happened. And who approaches her but Dr. Whale? Yeah, of man. course. And she wants, she asks him, you know, if he's ever gone into a situation that he knew would have a negative outcome, does it anyway, and then is regretting the outcome that he knew would happen. And he says no, because he refuses to do what's expected to keep his life interesting. Okay. <laughs> Which is a bananas answer. Do whatever you feel like, I guess. No, he kind of does have that big dick energy of, I never do anything wrong. Everything I do is exactly how I wanted it to be. He's Fuck just, that guy. Yeah, he's just not great. He's gross. Yes. And continuing to be gross, he asks to buy her a drink. Weird to me, since they already went on a date and he couldn't be bothered to focus on her instead of Ruby's butt for five seconds. Yeah, but remember, nope. now she's sad. Oh, So she'll oh. put out easier. Oh, that's fair. He, and he buys her a drink. Yeah. And then she says, you can buy me too. And that's the end. Well. That's it. That's it. Well, nice, nice job. Nice. Thank you. Thanks for writing it out. Oh, of course. Made made my job easy. (laughs) You did a great job. Wow. This episode. Well, I I don't, wasn't getting a lot goes on. A lot. A lot of things that are actually very important to the plot. Right. Like, I feel like. What I'm getting the sense of as we rewatch these is, like, I think the writers are really good at pacing certain individual episodes, but they can't pace a season, which is why we eventually go to a split season format. And, like, we're not great at pacing long term. Because we'll have one very well-paced episode like this one, and then we have episodes like Last week's episode where it's like, what did we, what, what, why? Why are we here? What, what is happening? Why are you doing it? We just don't know. It's too early in the series for us to be getting filler episodes. Right? And that was what was sad about last week. That was a filler episode and it was episode five. It's too early for us to be getting filler. Uh Uh-huh. But anyway, we got it, so... 
Returning to the shepherd. Uh-huh. I know you have thought. I know you do. So why don't you kick <sighs> us off? Okay. Take, All right. take it away. We're just going to go back, right back to where we were last week. And I would like to revisit Jeff, David, hopping right over that fence. Right over those boundaries. The symbolic one and the literal one. Love that. Oh my god. Just, she keeps, Mary Margaret keeps trying to put boundaries between them. She keeps trying to say no. She keeps doing her very best to keep him away from her because she knows it's not right. She knows that it is, she's not comfortable with it. And it's not right. And he just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing. And look, I know this show was written in 2011 and we were still in that narrative of like, oh no, like play hard to get and that's okay. No really means yes, but like, it it doesn't, it doesn't. And it drives me crazy because it's supposed to be our like central love story right now. And I think that's why it's even more complicated. Like, I recognize in the narrative of their love story, they are meant to be together. This is a cursed reality where they aren't together. It does not make it less gross. No, because when you're thinking about just the storybook part of things, this is a man who has amnesia, (laughs) who is married, but doesn't remember his wife and is having trouble with that. And... Then you've got Mary Margaret who understands all of that and is looking at the situation right now and saying, I don't want to be part of that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a factor in this. Whatever my feelings may be, I don't want to do this. And he keeps saying, no, but I want you. But I want you. But what if you did want me? How about you do these things? And then finally he wears her down. And I mean, and I know it's the curse taking effect. And I know that like in reality, he was going to pick her. And then the curse memories took effect, I guess, because the windmill hypnotized him or something. I guess. We don't know. They don't explain it. It... Windmill. uh, Windmill. Gold looking ominous. We can yeah, he does that. Dots, He's very good at that. Well, but it just drives me nuts because we're supposed to like see we're this is we're being told this is romantic. They are meant to be together. This is how it's supposed to be. And he is stalking her at work. He is interrupting her at her job. It's not like he came in after school. There were children is- walking into her classroom, listening He's- to this whole conversation. Talking to her in front of her students. Like, he's bugging her in front of the town people. He's letting that, airing out their dirty laundry in front of people. He's clearly told Regina. Mm. You know, it's just, it drives me nuts. Because we're supposed to be told this is romantic and they're meant to be. And I'm like, anybody, if any man ever acted this way around me... I would be looking into restraining orders. Truly. Well, it's interesting because I've noticed a few times in the show, and I don't know if it's intentional or if it just happens, but the show tries very hard to highlight a character as either a villain or a hero, but the writing says a different story. It's so true. You see it with Regina? You see it with Catherine. They're, they're, They're like, she's a villain, but you feel very bad for her. What has Catherine done so far that has made her a villain? She's been forced to marry a man she doesn't love in the Enchanted Forest, and she is married to an amnesiac who's in love with a teacher in Storybrooke. The fucking audacity. Right. She's done nothing. She, she has done absolutely nothing to deserve being called a villain. Exactly. And same with Regina, too. Like, they say, this is a villain. It's like, no, that's a cinnamon roll. Right. She's the like, hero of the series. You have not realized it yet. This is her right. story. And they will continue to not realize that for quite some time. Until the season finale. Really? I know. The season. The series finale. The series finale. Truly. I mean, and again, with Regina, in the Enchanted Forest, as the Evil Queen, she is a villain. 
Absolutely. Mm. We are shown why she is a villain. We have sh- we are shown that she is a bad person. And that is true. And I know we're supposed to then take that and bring it over. And it's a little easier with Regina because we know she retains her memories. So I I do understand that like some of her actions come right. with you know the baggage of Right, she is working actively to uphold this curse that she's placed. But if you were just looking at her actions from the citizens of Storybrooke's view... She has done nothing wrong. She's done nothing wrong. Her child went and found his birth mother in a closed adoption, which, that's no tea, no shade. That is, that's fine. I understand that he is going to want to know his real mom, his adopt, or, you know, his birth mom. Sure. But... It does not make Regina a villain. No! It doesn't make her a villain for being upset that he went behind her back. It doesn't make no. her a villain for being upset that the mom is then trying to insinuate herself into his life without much permission from Regina. Right. You know, there's just, there's a lot going on there where I'm like... I, we know that it's a villainous act because we know why she's doing it and why she's upset the about it. In the town, why do they buy into it? Right. Everybody should be, you would think, be very mad at Emma mm-hmm. for coming in. But no. Okay. Well. No, because she's the savior. We love her. Right. Of course. She's the savior. So. Uh-huh. Anywho, that's my very long well, two-episode rant about David. Listen. It's going to continue, because they, you know what's coming. I know. I know. And, again, that's the interesting thing. They take Mary Margaret, and they say, look how great and perfect. She's doing the right thing. They're going to flip that on its head with no warning. So true. Just like All of a sudden, she's the, the mistress, the other woman. She is the other woman. Possibly a murderer. We don't know. Yeah, but that one's not coming for a while. True. Well, for a well, couple no, of episodes. She's accused of murder in season one. She actually yes. murders in season two. <laughs> Character growth. <laughs> it's called growth, sweetie. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> you know, I like that art uh, for her. I love that journey for Mary Margaret. Accused murderer to real murderer. <laughs> yep. She, she will learned. face no justice from any of it. No, but this actually segues pretty great into uh, what I have been thinking about. And I already mentioned it a little bit, but these characters that are painted a certain way, but are clearly not. And I know I mentioned there, I've never met a Catherine that I like, and I stand by that. I feel bad for Catherine in this show. I feel I bad we for might. Her. I think we might be coming a Catherine apologist podcast. I don't love that journey for us. But I think we might be. Well, because it's truly upsetting just to see the treatment that she gets in this show. Really? This episode especially. Well, all episodes especially, honestly. Mm-hmm. But what baffles me the most is kind of how Regina inserts herself into this. We can assume she is orchestrating all of this. She is the puppet master. She is making things happen. She gets David's memories back. Allegedly, she is the one that had David in a coma. You know, all of these things are her doing. Right. Suddenly, David wakes up, not part of the plan. She has to breathe life into this NPC she wasn't expecting to use. <laughs> which is Gotta upsetting. bring him back from close to the town line, where they're just exactly. slowly hanging up laundry. <laughs> <laughs> and so she brings Catherine into the story. No one has seen her in a while. No one cares that she's suddenly back whatever and she forms a friendship with her regina forms a very tight-knit friendship over the next few episodes with Catherine. Catherine says we're friends now we look out for each other i'm here for you and you're here for me regina says you know i have never really had a friend Catherine says too bad you do now so there's the implication that on a certain level regina is now doing these things because she cares for Catherine. Right. 
which is also not villainous. Again, it's, yeah. Like the, the narrative is, oh, she's doing this so that Snow and Charming aren't together. Yeah, sure, fine. Also, because she now has a friend who's invested. Yeah, who who she cares about and wants and to is, see happy. Can, and is canonically married to that person. I can tell you right now, right now, if anyone were to ever threaten your relationship, I'd be all up on them. Like, you Thank will you. leave them alone. Absolutely. And, and so, Get the fuck out of here. Right? So that's why it's really, it's baffling to me that there's still these undertones of Regina is orchestrating this she's doing something heinous and evil right now she's truly looking out for a friend a confidant that she has the one person in this whole goddamn town that seems to like her how dare she how dare she it's it is weird be like i think it was a weird choice to put them together doing through this yes because it puts our supposed heroes in the distinct wrong. Yes. And that's and that's what I mean about the writers. I think they have an idea of this is a hero. This is a heroic character. They're the good guys. And then they do shit like this that completely defies that messaging. Right. Explain anything about what David has been doing as a hero. Like a hero does not leave their wife at the first sign of trouble. No. That's not to say they don't leave. That's not no. what I'm saying. This is immediately, it's, it's, I don't remember, so I'm a go. I don't remember, and I don't, it doesn't feel right. The vibes I'm aren't. I to remember. The vibes aren't correct, so I'm, a, I'm out. <laughs> like, as opposed to being like, like, I, you know, there's little things you could have changed where, mm -hmm. just in the order of things, if them trying to work it out had come first. Yes. And he's sitting there going, I don't remember. I'm really trying and I'm having I... so much trouble and we're fighting all the time. And then I'm bonding with this other woman who... I seem to get along very naturally with and I have feelings for, you know, they, they could have just switched kind of the order of things so that he was leaving his wife because they were not getting along. And not because, because he couldn't be bothered to try. Right. Because right now he's just it, literally one day out of the hospital and he's like, the okay, so I'm going to go. <laughs> like, the vibes are not correct. The wallpaper is weird and the log in the picture has legs <laughs> and I got to go. Yeah, we, maybe we'll, okay, I will try to get a good screenshot of that and post it and y'all can tell me what the hell is happening in these portraits. These landscape weird. pictures lining the Nolan household. What the fuck? I, these people just don't know what to do with their walls. They don't. <laughs> they do not. I also like the red solo cup detail. <laughs> Personally. The single red solo guy. Right. Just one. So, <laughs> one person was having a rager. I mean, that's me right now. <laughs> mostly. So, there's the Regina Catherine piece. I would like to briefly touch on the fact that I'm pretty sure David did not tell Catherine they were over and done. Because since Regina and Catherine are good friends, Regina would not have been so terribly shocked and startled when David says, oh yeah, I made my mind. I made a choice. So David claims he left her. Did not tell her that. Has not let his wife know that he's leaving her. The rage in my body, I feel. I'm going to get very soft-spoken because otherwise I will be screaming. Yeah, good. He's <sighs> so... It just so many things about the way that this plot point was executed are so bad so so very bad oh non-heroic no the vibes are not immaculate here no and the thing that upsets me well not really upsets me but we've had a lot we you know we've been talking about mostly the storybook 
side of things because that that is where things get the messiest Ooh. obviously Ooh. but Ooh. but it's not as, all that great over in fairy tale land <laughs> in the enchanted forest no still i you know i think i think the actual plot of the enchanted forest stuff was much more tightly plotted and actually done fairly well yeah you know we've got mostly mostly a plot that make it's a coherent plot it makes sense it actually reaches out and like points to other episodes it serves a purpose there's a reason that this is existing right like i i get that but there are just little details that mm-hmm. drive me bonkers oh yeah bonkers because oh, yeah. like okay so I would like to revisit the scene where David returns to Mama David to say goodbye. Sure. Let's go. And and we know, we know, he says, he, he says it, he says it, the king said it. If David does not go through with this marriage, not only will the kingdom suffer, but his mother will die. His mother will be murdered, right? Those are the terms. Those are the terms. The king said it. David came back. He parroted it to Mama David. He was handed a ring. Right. He he comprehended. He understood, and he made his choice. He's back to say goodbye and to go through with this wedding because he's going to keep his mom safe. Yep. Uh Uh-huh. Absolutely. Yet. And yet. And yet. He gets into this carriage. We know that they are going to be set upon by bandit Snow White. He will then go on an adventure with bandit Snow White, fall in love, and abandon his wedding. Mama David doesn't die. No. Mama David stays very much alive. I was trying to to rationalize this. I was trying to think, well, okay. Your first mistake. I know. (laughs) <laughs> I know, dumb of me, really. But, you know, I was like, well, okay. If, maybe, maybe if he's getting married to Snow White, and that also, because she is a princess, brings its own protection or, you know, value to the marriage. But at this sure. point, she's a bandit. She's on the run. She is not the heir to a kingdom. Her kingdom has been usurped. There's no reason for the king to keep Mama David alive after he bails on this wedding. But we will hear nothing of it. There will be no fallout from this. They forgot about her. That's fair. She was out in the field. So She was with the 99. You know. It's fine. Hanging out. Just hanging out. Nobody thought about her. No. You know. It's fine. It's it's fine. It's fine. It is. That well, what else do you got? You have you have more. Uh, well, okay, okay. So. Oh no, I don't like it when you do that. That means you're gonna say something I'm not gonna like. Well, okay. It's not. It's this is this is not a plot thing. This is this is this is truly nothing. This is truly nitpicking. That's what this we do. That's the whining its... part of this. <laughs> this is at it's nit at the nittiest grittiest level. <laughs> But we are introduced to King Midas. Sure. And we are told (laughs) that, you know, King What's-His-Bucket, I don't remember, Bradley Whitford, needs... (laughs) He needs... George, that's his name. Every time I look at him, I'm like, oh, it's just the dude from Ugly Betty. That's fair. Uh, But, like... He needs he needs gold, right? Yeah. For his kingdom. So he's got a gold-based economy, correct? <laughs> we can sure. all agree. We can all agree. He, Everything oh. in the kingdom seems to be run on a gold economy. Pieces I mean, of gold are exchanged in yeah. payment. We see it happen. People are trading gold. They're looking for gold. Right? Yeah. This is what makes the world go round. Right. Bunny ma- makes the world go round. The world go round. It makes the world go round. Um... And then, but then we have Midas. Oh. 
what did he just like he can touch anything and turn it into gold which makes him the equivalent of like the treasury just deciding to print a billion more dollars and put him out it just floods the market he is an economy ruining situation the oh, markets no. should be in shambles because he can make gold whenever the fuck he feels like it. I hate everything that you just said. Feels like it. Now, I will say he is one person, so he's probably just a freaking Bezos or, you know. Yeah, he, he does wear that nifty gloves, so he's not just, like, turning shit to gold right. left and right. He's Elon Musk just deciding <laughs> that he wants to turn it into gold, and he only saves it for himself. The giant, giant dragon that he turned to gold by touching mm-hmm. its corpse. You know, gotta touch the dragon corpse. What else are you gonna do? Mm-hmm. Gotta touch it. Gotta touch it. I wanna touch it. <laughs> Can I touch it? Yeah? No. Yeah? No? No. <laughs> no? No? But the, yeah, anyway. <laughs> wow. That was, that was my last pit piece. I it's think that's not important, but no, no. I think that's the level we want to end on, though, because so few things in this show are important that feels right. That's so true. Okay. Well, thank you. Oh. All right. How well, our list, how's our list looking? Family tree, I don't think we added. Well, now, we did we add something? Well, no, we already had David and Catherine slash Abigail. James. James. We get a James. We do get to put James onto the tree. That's fun. We get to put James onto the tree attached to David. And Mama and... David. Oh, and Mama David, yeah. So we oh. do get, we get a lot. We get Mama David, we get King George, James. Oh, shit. Yeah. And David. Um, and then if Catherine hasn't already been acknowledged on the tree, she's officially on the tree as a permanent marriage for now. Fabulous. Do they officially get married, though? In well, the they're forest. no, they're not in the enchanted forest. Oh, it's Just Abigail, in, you're right. But you they right, you're right. are, yeah, Catherine married is, in store. Yeah, they, they are supposedly married, so they're gonna go on as a as a as a marriage, That's fair. and That's at fair. least until the curse is broken. <laughs> How's that fuck fern looking? Oh, it's growing by the second. Um, <laughs> Ate that journey for us. So, number one, we get to put Catherine and David on, I would argue. Because they go to winky face bed. Bed. Yeah, they go to bed. So, um, we get to put them on, and then... Here comes Whale and Snow, or as Mary Margaret. No. Yeah, they they were cursed. They were on a break. Um, (laughs) We were cursed. So, yeah... Um, well, let's start, let, okay, let's start with the magic beans and the fine, and the curses. Yeah, start, no, you know, start there. no magic beans. We have no curse ex- except for this main curse. And that le- brings us to Emma's superpower. Uh, now, I'm uh, going to preface this by reading the Disney Plus summary because I think it's important. David must choose between Catherine and Mary Margaret, yada yada, with whom sure. he has fallen deeply in love. Sheriff Graham is caught in a lie. Prince Charming's destiny is altered. Now, I'm going to go back to read this one piece in case it was missed. Sheriff Graham is caught in a lie. They he lied to. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you asked, Flo, because uh, he lied to Emma to her face. He Look, said he dead work. in the eye. And said, I have to work at the dog shelter tonight. Can you work for me? And dead. she said, yes. And she didn't clock it. No. She didn't clock it. failed. And I'm more mad the Disney Plus summary also clocks it as a lie. They tell us he's caught in a lie. Which means he was not being honest, which means her superpower should have been triggered. So we're, so, yeah, because her, by her admission and by the rules of the show that they have laid out, she can tell when anyone is lying to her. And this so is like an omission of truth. Yeah. And the one caveat is that if they believe it to be the truth. Yeah. Like if, if Henry came up and that. said, 
Like, for example, that's why doesn't clock is a lie when Henry's like, yeah, and and uh, David is Prince Charming. She's not like, you're telling the truth. It's not right. just a child's belief system. You're not going to clock that as a lie. That's just your own reality. Right. And it's not going to clock as a truth either because she can't, she doesn't have what, she doesn't have the ability to tell when people, like, she's not a lie detector. I mean, she no. is a lie detector, but she can't tell if people it's are not- being honest. It's not like and a truthful. Pinocchio situation where her nose will grow. Right. You know, she she's not sitting here going, oh, that statement you just said was true. She can just only tell if it's false. Correct. But. So those standards, <laughs> nothing that Sheriff Graham told her should have sat well with her. No, it should have been clocked as you are lying to me. She, should, she would not know what the truth is, but she would know that's a lie. What the fuck are you doing tonight? Or who the fuck are you doing tonight, sir? Wait. Spill the beans. Well, I think it would also be one thing if we were shown, like, she gets, like, a little, like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? And then, like, kind of tails him to find <laughs> out. Because then I'd be like, oh, she understood that it was a lie. She just didn't call him on it. But yeah. she didn't. She just worked. And she happened. <laughs> Yeah. to run into him conveniently on perhaps one of the weirdest walks of shame. God. Yes. This is one of the few lies that made me blatantly angry because a lot of the other ones, you know, you could you could make an argument that you know, it was a lie adjacent. There was a partial truth in there. Like even last or two weeks ago with Gold saying, oh, it's my property and it was really a baby right well like he's not incorrect if there was a contract no no this is just not true no this is a straight lie this is lying this is lying at its most basic form correct so for those of you counting that means her superpower has been used or should have been used nine times and has failed seven of those nine times it has been successful two times Okay, so two out of nine. I don't think that's a superpower. That's not even coincidence. That's just... You're not even batting 50%. No. Like, I would say if she was doing 50-50 and she had a very good intuition, fine, I'll let you say you have a superpower because you're pretty good at catching people in a lie. With this average, you don't get to call it a superpower. Or a skill. No. Just like your it, the anger I felt because we finished the episode and I sat there and I was like, oh, I guess I don't have any like lies to add. And then I just it dawned on me and I became slowly. furious. I was so mad. I was still so mad. It's nonsense. We have broken her superpower and we are five episodes in. God. I six episodes, episodes in. Episodes. We're okay. We're better. six episodes in. I hate it here. Like they, they truly hope that we forget it exists until they need it for the plot. Correct. They are hoping we are not clocking any other lies. They weren't counting on us. Okay, but I would like to make the argument that we were clocking these things in the initial run. So we were. We were. That's not, I don't think that's an us thing. I don't think that's a, we're just sitting here no. nitpicking a show. That's a, you're think... telling us episode one, this is a, this is a facet of her personality. This is the thing that makes her special. We are meant to believe it and trust it. And except I... for every other instance that she exists. I don't understand also why it's so important that she has this power. Like, Otherwise, Nothing, she would never have gone to Storybrooke. None of the, none of the, like, instances, in none of the two instances we've had where she's successful could have, like, she could, there were other ways to get her exactly to the same spot yes. without having this overpowered superpower. I just, at the very least, like, you could just have her, because the two times she succeeded are Henry, right? Pretty much. Oh, yeah. Like, they're, they're, have it, Henry, just have, I caveat it later that with her son, she's able to, I don't know. I don't know. Or just have her 
be like, you're a bad liar. Right? You're lying. You're 10. You're, ten and you... yeah, you're a bad liar and you're lying. And I know you that. Feel bad. Yeah. You're a bad liar and you should feel bad. Yeah. Well, I think it would be more interesting if her superpower were something that came into play with who she is. Like, I can't think of a good example. If, if they're saying she's the savior, though, it'd be interesting if she had a skill set that aligned with a savior. Right. Not just a shitty lie detector. Right. Even if it was, like, not, even if it was not a lie detector, if it was an intuition-based thing. Because that gives yes. you the same nonsense that you get with this lie detector. Only you not don't have to worry about her. Well, and you don't have to worry about, okay, if somebody's lying to her face, but we need her to be lied to, does yeah. that break it? Because it does, like, if it's just she gets these very strong gut feelings yes. from time to time, because the, in, in, this, in the fiction of the show, because she needs, you know, because it's something that she needs to fix as the savior, and yeah. in the writer's room, it's... Be because we need Emma to do this. We we don't know how to get her there. If she just had these really strong gut intuitions it because be that is someone who needs saving. Right? And that would align they, with the savior thing. Mm -hmm. The second it becomes got, lies, you break it. Well, and I think the second they decided to give it a name of a superpower. So that right. implies it will not fail. It is a superpower. This is... Superman able to fly. There, it, there might be a kryptonite, but it's a very rare thing you will come across. Right, not and a two out of nine situation. Well, yeah, we're at twenty two percent. By the way, twenty two percent success. Jesus like, and David. the other thing is, it's not that they leave this idea of the superpower in the first episode. Like, I'd be no. one thing if she told her son, to "Like, I have a superpower," because she's just trying to like intimidate him but she right, calls it a superpower to... later they keep they bringing it up when it applies to the plot it's suddenly brought up right and then that means when she's lied to and doesn't catch it because the plot requires her not to catch it her superpower is broken it doesn't work yes. it's oh. nonsense it's me nonsense so mad and i'm so mad that we could just sit here we've literally never talked about this before but the fact that we could but we just came up in five minutes of oh just give her really strong gut feelings like it's not that give difficult. her an intuition give her an intuition that chimes in mm -hmm. when it whenever <laughs> the savior you know give her savior senses right. like spidey senses a roll an insight check right <laughs> <sighs> maybe maybe oh, maybe she just rolls really bad perception checks all of the time it's i'm just, so angry it's 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 nonsense oh. because there's oh. sometimes i get so mad at this show because there are such easy little fixes simple simple fixes that would not change oh. mm -mm. anything but would take away a problem i mean we wouldn't be able to sit here and nitpick it otherwise though yeah no i i know i get angry because then it would be a good show I, and i would be <laughs> more angry if this were a good show i'll be honest with you oh i don't think we would have stuck near with it nearly as no, long if it was good i would hate it if it was trying to take itself seriously and trying to be a good show i would hate it well you know we we're recently watching, <laughs> right? We were recently rewatching some what, like season four? Yes. In our free time, some, some for some funsies. Oh. And God, I will say, like, no, it's not a great show, but it is so, so much fun, fun to watch. It's, it's so, so much, much fun. fun to watch. Like, I think maybe that's why we get so nitpicky with this season. And with season one, because there's the mm -hmm. promise of, like, a good, serious show in it. Right. Like, a good drama. An interesting, creative 
drama. And then by like season three, they're like, well, they get out of Neverland and go, that didn't work. Never mind. <laughs> Neverland, more like never mind, am I right? <laughs> I don't even want to think about Neverland. We have to go back. That's my least, why? that is our absolute least favorite arc, because you are trapped in a place where there are walls you cannot escape from, and it's upsetting, and it's terrible, it's claustrophobic. and it's it's, I hate everything about Neverland. I hate everything I, about it. It feels like it drags on forever, and I think when we rewatched it, we realized it really, That's it's not, it's half, it's half a season. Yep. We're sitting here like, oh my god, it's three seasons long. Not three, but we were definitely like, oh, we whole spend season. a whole season. We spend a season in Neverland. Forever. It because felt like a not, lifetime. You know, talking about Fill episodes. Like, I think Gross. if we were to sit there and list out all of the things that happen in Neverland that are important. The one, I can think of one thing. It's maybe, like, you maybe have enough plot points to do one per episode. And yeah, yet, I can, and still have more episodes. Like, you probably can, have, like, maybe. six or seven plot points that maybe. are, like, we need to devote some time to this. Exactly. I can think of, you know, the whole Rumpel's father thing. I can think of Tinkerbell revealing Robin as Regina's soulmate. Right. That's, um, my brain, that is where my brain stops. You know, I mean, you could do uh, the David getting poisoned thing. He wouldn't have to get poisoned. Like, what does that do to the plot? Like, why is that? It does nothing except, <laughs> you know, raise stakes. Stupid. I hate this show. I hate this show. It's dumb. It's um, I, yep. I guess we've got, you know, the the start of the love triangle. Well, oh. that's fun for no one. I, I, I speak of the love triangle between Emma, Hook, and Neil. I'm sorry. But, no. again, that's like a handful of things. And we spend how many episodes? many god Too no many. we need to stop talking about neverland because i will just get angry <laughs> we're gonna just gonna keep so talking about it later on oh my gosh well look forward to that god this was such a bad time this was such a bad time but the good news is can only oh, go up from news. here <laughs> thank god the week can only go up from here thank the lord thank david jesus Jesus David? <laughs> What's the consensus here? Is it David Jesus or Jesus David? I mean, there's David Christ. Christ. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. That's the end of the of recording. We just came up with that. David Christ. Mwah! Beautiful. Every other instance of Jesus David is redacted. It is now David Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and oh, thank beautiful. David Christ. I can only go up from here. Thanks, David Christ. Uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Devil. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see you all next time for whatever the hell happens next. Can't wait. <laughs> Our next episode will be Season 1, Episode 7. And um, so feel free to watch it before or, of course, watch yes. along with us. And exactly. uh, have we'll a wonderful week. week. Yes. Bye. Yes. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.